Hey, so there's a new Saints Row game right around the corner. Now, we have no idea whether or not it's gonna be any good, but don't worry, we'll be reviewing it when it comes out. But for now, if you just wanna know what the deal is, here's everything to know about the game before it launches. We got 10 things, so let's get started off with number 10 and talk gameplay changes. Now, the gameplay change that is most prominently featured in the trailers has got to be the car combat. Instead of just shooting from a window while driving like before, you can now hold down Y or triangle to get on the roof and shoot at enemies from there. This seems like a simple but fun addition that should make driving around in co-op a lot more fun. You know, while on the roof, it looks like your ally will automatically drive your car for you, but we're not sure what happens if you're just by yourself. The car probably keeps driving anyway, similar maybe to like how it works in the Just Cause games. We're not sure, just speculating, but yeah. Uh, of course, another major change is that you can fly. Well, not fly, but you can get access to a wingsuit that lets you glide around similar to, again, Just Cause games. You can use it to get around the city, seemingly pretty easy, quickly escape a crashing plane or more efficiently hijack a vehicle. One fun addition is that apparently you can bounce off NPCs while flying to get back into the air and keep your hover going for longer. Also, it's worth pointing out that cars have signature abilities now, like this Gibraltar that has crab steering, which is probably some kind of sideswipe ability. There's also a dead dedicated dodge roll, because you gotta have those in games now. I'm kidding, but uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be pretty significant. How it actually all feels, how the aiming, how the movement feels, we don't know for sure yet, but it looks like pretty standard stuff. Now, next over at number nine, let's talk story. It seems like a complete continuity reboot where your custom character becomes the leader of a new gang of saints, which looks like it's going to model itself as kind of a startup rather than a criminal organization. That's just semantics though, because it looks like you're still gonna be inflicting just as much death and crime and destruction as usual. Now your character is new to this town and looking to make a name for themselves. You meet up with allies like Eli, the brains of the group and the quote unquote strategic business associate, Nina, who's your getaway driver, and Ken, who's basically the muscle of the group and described as a thrill junkie. El Wally gets a mention in the gameplay trailer as well, a mysterious hitman who may or may not be an enemy. I have no idea how he factors into things. It's also worth noting that instead of driving to locations to start missions, it looks like you select your next goal from a planning table, which has a map of the city on it. Similar to how progression kind of worked in a Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Maybe that screen is just for selecting your target and then you're free to do things how you want, or maybe it's just for starting main missions or something. We don't know for certain just yet. Now, next over at number eight, let's talk about the open world. The game is set in an entirely new city for the series called Santo Ileso, which looks like a combination of Las Vegas, Nevada, and Phoenix, Arizona, with a touch of South Central Los Angeles thrown in for good measure. There are the usual areas you'd kind of expect in a Saints Row game. You know, there's a downtown area, there's casinos, there's rundown sections of the town and the suburbs. But one thing that stands out is that there's actually what looks like a pretty big Badlands area you can explore outside of the city. There's a lot more country here than in previous entries in the series with a lot more open spaces and dusty trails to drive down. And with a lot of the emphasis on car stuff and car combat in this game, uh, we think there's a lot of room for wide open crazy opportunities, hopefully. Now there are 15 districts total. And while we don't know what they all are, they're pretty varied as far as Saints Row open worlds go. The Providencia is a dusty area overlooked by a gigantic rock shaped like a panther. Lakeshore is the upscale downtown area, while the Monte Vista district is a Hollywood Hills-like gated community area. Now, one thing that is clear from the trailer is that the world is just a much more vibrant place compared to previous Saints Row games with a lot of unique architecture and secrets to find. Yeah, it's been implied that there might be some familiar things here and there. Now, I'm not sure how many interiors there will be. So far, we've seen very little indoor space in any of the trailers so far, so it seems like that'll be a more limited element to the game, but maybe Volition just wants to keep some of that stuff a surprise. Next over at number seven, customizing your character to just an insane degree has always been a key part of the Saints Row franchise since the second game. And it really looks like they're keeping up that tradition here. You can now customize your character, your vehicles, and your guns as well. And not just by swapping out skins like in the older games. Now, of course, the big thing, character customization is pretty in depth this time. There are a lot of options and a lot of goofy options. Even if it's not as granular as other character creators, like say the one in Dragon's Dogma, but still 
still, it's pretty cool. You might not be able to make like your perfect celebrity lookalike here. In fact, you know, the character creation and customization menu, the options feel very similar to what we've seen in Saints Row 3 and 4. You know, the layout is actually pretty identical, but you can be fat or skinny, young or old, muscular or doughy. There are a lot of options in just your body shape. You can even give yourself a custom prosthetic leg if you want. There's a lot of opportunities to make the coolest, perfectest person or the stupidest looking person of your dreams, as well as eight different voice options for your boss, similar to how the previous games did it. There's also gun customization, which we'll get to in a bit, but car customization is just as impressive. It looks like you can swap out presets, which are custom styles for your car. You can change out the paint, the trim, the tires, and the horn. Next over at number six, let's talk weapons. Now Saints Row has been famous for the last few games for its ridiculous weapons. So here's what you gotta know about the new one. A big shout out to Tech Radar who compiled a list of all the known weapons from previews. We'll link them and everything down in the description below. Uh, but with this being a reboot and it kind of straddling a line between normal and super over the top like previous games, it seems like weapons might be pared down a bit, but there are a lot from what we saw. Uh, there are assault rifles, including a burst one and fully auto ones, there's long range rifles, rocket launchers, and a handful of shotguns from sawn off to like big crazy tactical auto shotguns. There will be SMGs, there's gonna be pistols from the smaller type of pistols to like massive magnum hand cannons, and a big revolver that shoots explosive rounds. Now all that stuff might not sound too crazy or amazing, but a few things worth pointing out, we haven't seen every weapon yet, they all do have varying stats that leaves the floor open for more fun and customization, and within these groups, there does seem to be visually usually at least one gun that is like a fun weird variant like Take for example the SMGs, there's an old school style Tommy gun. So you're gonna be getting these weapons at the friendly fire weapon stores around the game world. And thankfully, like I said, there is a little bit of a level of customization to the weapons that in my opinion, might make them feel a bit cooler. Outside of slapping different colored skins on them and swapping out parts, you can also completely change the visual appearance of the gun, similar to how it worked in Saints Row 4. Along with that, there are a bunch of melee weapons from a, like a brutal baseball bat to a machete, a stun baton, an axe, but I wonder how far they're gonna take these, if you know what I mean. Still, I'm hoping the customization and stat upgrading is satisfying. You know, that'll probably make it a lot more fun. Now, next over at number five, outside of the main story, there's the expected side activities and jobs. Now, the more traditional side quests are a thing called side hustles, where you complete missions like riding shotgun, where you shoot at pursuers while the AI drives the car. But then there's also Grand Theft Auto San Andreas-like systems where you can take over enemy territory by engaging them in battle on the streets. And as you'd expect, this runs that gang out of the area and makes getting around a lot more easy. There are tourism locations, which kind of reminds us of something from Watch Dogs 2. You know, if there's something noteworthy around, you can take out your camera and snap a picture of it. One thing the old games had were a lot of mini games, and it looks like some of them will be returning here with criminal ventures. Now, they're businesses you can buy that all have unique mission types associated with them. Now, one is a food truck that also deals drugs, which sounds a lot like drug dealing missions from previous games, while another is a ridiculous job where you have to drive a truck full of toxic waste and try to avoid spilling its contents everywhere. Now apparently there will be 15 of these criminal ventures in total and according to this Game Informer article, Saints Row project manager Ray Haslip confirmed that insurance fraud is coming back, which is absolutely incredible because that's like the funnest, silliest mode. Other goofy stuff includes a mission where you leave bad reviews on competing restaurants, websites, and then fight them when they come back at you for revenge. Completing these side activities can apparently unlock some pretty cool rewards like a hoverboard, so that's a positive as well. Next over at number four, let's talk co-op because you can play cooperatively and just crime around the open world with a buddy. It's two player online co-op. Most likely you'll also probably have the option to match make co-op with random people as well. Uh, now, when playing with a friend, note there isn't full cross play cross platforms, but what is pretty cool is cross gen co-op at least. Meaning say if you're playing on PS4, but your friend is on PS5, you can still play with them. Now between the vehicles, causing explosions and chasing 
differences and wingsuiting around, it's easy to think that doing it all with a friend will probably make for a good time as long as the internet holds up. If it's anywhere near as good as previous Saints Row games, co-op will be happy. Now, according to GamesRadar, on top of the standard chaos, you can also prank your co-op partner. There's like a prank meter that can be filled up that lets you turn your co-op partner into like a trash can or a toilet. That seems very appropriately Saints Row, so I'm going to definitely be doing that immediately. Now down to number three, we talked about the open world and the different districts, but who are you fighting? Well, there are seemingly three factions you have to deal with throughout the game. There's the idols. These are the guys you may have seen that are all like tech glowing party mask type people, like watchdogs looking dudes. They kind of give off the fast and dangerous vibe. And then there's Los Panteros, the tough guy bruisers who just kind of give off the vibe of the classic luchador dudes from the older games, like the heavier stuff. Then there's the marshals, a military group with seemingly a lot of firepower. They're like private military contractors with a lot of money and guns, and they actually have ties to your main character's past. You know, from the trailers that we've seen and the gameplay overview, it does seem like in the game you might start out playing as a marshal and then maybe things go wrong and that's why you start your own gang. That's just speculating, but it's worth pointing out that all these groups have their own looks, their own hangouts, their own cars, you know, gang type Saints Row stuff you'd expect, but they seem like they might have a bit of depth to them, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now over at number two, there's character progression that should keep things interesting. Now, you level your character up to unlock skills, and you can equip up to four of them at one time by using the menu in your in-game smartphone. These skills are a mix of active and passive things that get more interesting the higher the level that they're unlocked with. Uh, they, they use a thing you burn called flow. It's something that slowly refills during the action. So the skills right at the start, there's uh, Pineapple Express you can unlock. You may have seen this in trailers or previews, but it's a melee move where like you grab a dude, shove a grenade down his pants, and then toss him towards other enemies. It's just absolutely glorious. I'm going to be using that all the time. Then there's a uh, unlockable permanent health upgrades, a temporary health and strength boost that you can activate, the ability to spin around and fire bullets in 360 degrees for maximum damage, and the ability to call in other saints to help out. Now, there might be more. Uh, from what we've seen out there, the skills stop at level 20, so that's either it or there's way more, because in previous games you could level up higher, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now, down to number one, let's talk housekeeping, of course. Saints Row is releasing August 23rd, 2022 for the regular price of $60 in the US for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, S1, and PC. On screen here, we have the PC requirements, just so you have a heads up. They'll also be linked in the description. If you pre-order the regular standard edition anywhere, you get the Idols Anarchy Pack, which includes an idol-themed helmet, a weapon, and the Sandstorm Scrambler. Now, specifically, if you really care about the nitty gritty, if you pre-order at GameStop, you can get a Saints custom convertible and a Saints custom jacket. Then there's the Saints Row Legacy Edition. That's like a Best Buy exclusive for 90 bucks, which gets you the expansion pass and Saints Row the Third Remastered. Then there's the Notorious Edition for 90 bucks, which is a GameStop exclusive with uh, the expansion pass and a bunch of items, a mini art book, the American Muscle Bundle, the Saints Criminal Customs. And if you're only buying it digitally for 90 bucks, you get the Saints Row Gold Edition, which with the expansion pack, the Idols Anarchy pack, and just more of those digital goodies. But also there's the Saints Row Platinum Edition that's digital only for $100. That's all the other stuff. Plus you get access to Saints Row the Third Remastered, which is still worth playing. This is too much stuff, if you ask me. Too much nickel and diming. It's kind of annoying to figure out which version. Either way though, as a consumer, if you like spending more on digital little things, you got a lot of choice. Either way, like we said, the game release is August 23rd, 2022, and we will be making a before you buy video on it. But that's it guys. That's everything you need to know. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you learned something, clicking the like button does legitimately help us out. Thank you. Let us know what you're thinking about this game, your hopes, your dreams, your expectations. But that's it. We'll see you guys next time.